Hello, my name is Janine Goodnitz, and I am a pupil personnel worker with Montgomery County Public Schools. And I am here today to speak with you briefly about emotional intelligence versus intellectual quotient. By the end of the presentation, you will be able to define emotional intelligence, define intelligence quotient, identify the five crucial skills of emotional intelligence, give examples of strategies used to improve emotional intelligence, and define a growth mindset. Let's start with intelligence quotient. The IQ score is calculated to represent your ability to reason and problem solve as compared to your same age peers or classmates. However, many people are unaware of their IQ score unless there's specifically been a request for that type of an assessment. However, it is understood that the IQ score can predict how successful you will be in life. However, there's more good news. According to Dr. Daniel Goldman, he believes that your emotional intelligence has a significant impact on your success in relationships, work, and your physical well being. According to Mr. Goldman, everyone is capable of improving or changing their emotional intelligence. And that's fascinating news. This type of thinking is known as having a growth mindset. According to Dr. Carol Dweck, a growth mindset is when people believe that their most basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. And we can all do that. So when you're having a really challenging time, know that you're learning. When you fail, know that you're learning. Just keep going. Once we have this particular type of mindset and this belief about intelligence, changes the whole conversation about what it means to be smart. Let's see how Dr. Goldman uses five critical skills to measure intelligence. Take this test yourself. Critical skill number one is self-awareness. How do you do in the self-awareness area? How do you do in your ability to recognize and understand your emotions? How do I improve my self-awareness, you might ask? Ask for constructive criticism and feedback from teachers and coaches and tutors and trusted adults. So when your teacher gives you a paperback, actually read her comments. Keep a journal and document your patterns of healthy and un unhealthy responses. Be honest with yourself and be open to changing. Critical skill number two is your self-regulation. How do you do with your ability to effectively manage stress and control your impulses? How do I improve my self-regulation? You could do what this gentleman is doing in this picture. He's using a mindfulness strategy. You can also hold yourself accountable by setting goals, short-term and long-term. Critical skill number three are your social skills. This is your ability to effectively interact with others. How do I improve my social skills? Practice actively listening and be conscious of your body language. Put your cell phone down. Look at people when they're speaking. Have the body language that says, what you're about to say is important to me. Critical skill number four is empathy. This is your ability to understand how others feel. How do I improve that? Practice imagining how other people feel and engage in a cause in your community to give back. Do those SSL hours. There's something very empowering about being able to help those who are in need. And the last critical skill is motivation, your ability to seek internal rewards beyond money and gifts. How do I improve motivation? Celebrate your accomplishments and work with a friend to remain accountable. Know that your teachers are trying very hard to build your skills to face the test of life and not a life of test after test after test. Thank you so much for joining me today. We look forward to a successful year with you and we're looking for you to prosper. Take care and have a great year. Bye-bye now.